So, on a Champions League night, we're discussing Spain's dominance in the Champions League. Last five years, all come from Spain. How did they manage this? <laughs> and how do the rest of us stop it? Well, I guess there's a lot of uh, talking points about it, but I, um, I think for, for La Liga, the most important was to try to, to increase revenues for the clubs. I think mm. that was the, the, main, the main thing. Um, the, the share with the, the, the amount of money that the, the clubs receive from the top of, of the table to the bottom, it was just crazy difference. There's a massive gap. Uh, lately, uh, La Liga has been growing, trying to improve um, uh, globally. And I think what they've done is try to get, uh, get better shares, more competitive leagues. And of course, the top teams keeping the, the top players. We have Neymar, um, Cristiano, Messi, Benzema, Modric, Kroos, so many important players. If you check on the best top 10 players, we have the most of them in La Liga. And that means that at the end, you got the best players. Those players in Barcelona and Real Madrid, they've been dominating, uh, dominating the, uh, the league. I, I know that you're going to say, and what happened with the Europa League? What I was telling you, Sevilla, Atletico Madrid, they've been the ones who've been ruling uh, there. Mm. Why? Because they, they could, uh, for Atletico Madrid, it was so difficult to try to, to get even closer to Barcelona and Real Madrid with the difference of, of the budget that they had. And uh, right now, because of that TV rights, they can keep um, Griezmann, they can keep, they can bring Costa back, they can bring top players, and that allows them to, if they cannot fight for Champions League, Europa League, and with Sevilla, and, and with Villarreal. Has, has it affected Real Madrid and Barcelona's spending power? Yes, of course. Of course. Of course, they're because... They're not receiving the same amount. Now they have to check. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Now they have to check. And they, okay, well, you can see Barcelona, how many players they signed mm. uh, last year. Not many, because now they have to check. Listen, be careful, because, of course, uh, if you want to buy a player that uh, gives you something different, uh, something that you don't have already, uh, you have to spend a lot of money. And that is not anymore as, as it was before. I mean, Real Madrid at the moment, they are in transition, yeah. uh, so to speak. So might this be the year? I mean, obviously we can't, we've seen where Barcelona are in their, their group, we're talking about them resting players, but could this be the year where possibly it's not a Spanish name yeah. on the trophy? Definitely, definitely. Uh, you got Atletico Madrid also there, that um, is doing well. But um, I see very strong Manchester City. I see very strong Tottenham, even though the, the, today only would want a good result. But I see them very strong, the way they play. I think that, that they can do well in, in European competition. Why not? They've been very close last year. So I think for this year, it could be the, the moment where everything changed. Or do you think when you kind of look at it and look at the Premier League, the Premier League, the style of football has evolved. So Lots. before it was always going to looking at the Spanish teams, how they well they keep the ball and you can't get near them. Well, actually, in the Premier League, when you look at the likes of Manchester City now, mm -hmm. they can also do that. They can play at a high tempo. They can change things quickly within mm -hmm. a game. So maybe that's where we're looking at it, that teams are now being able to, well, we, we can't say match yet because we've not gone on to win a Champions League. Yeah, the moment to adapt, team, exactly. Yeah. The way of playing to Premier League and the way of playing is totally different. I mean, mm -hmm. you cannot play the same way when you play a Premier League game or you play a Champions League game because it's a totally different approach, a way of playing, and because it's only three points or it's a knockout stage, so you have to think about that. And I think um, that's uh, this year, um, like you said, you, we got teams in the Premier League who can adapt, can change that intensity on the, on the game to uh, a more uh, calm and relaxed game where we can keep the ball a little bit more because in this game it's very important that we don't lose. So that, that way of uh, adapting to a, a very fast game where you, 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 you get the ball in a straight where you go forward, that is the way the Premier League uh, teams used to play. Uh, there is no um, stop in between, there was no uh, build up, it was I get the ball in trans fast transition. Right now you can see teams that, okay, now we can keep the ball. Now we can rest with the ball. And this kind of thing is going to help, I think, the uh, Premier League teams to, to become that. Craig, I want to come to you first of all on this tweet. Uh, Spanish football, it's had a huge influence on the Premier League. Who would you say are your favourite, or actually, let's cut to the chase, who's been the best Spanish player to come to the Premier League? We've, um, we've had a, a number of top Spanish players, but um, the one that stands out uh, has to be David Silva for me. Has that only been the case? Do you think he's only had the recognition in the last couple of seasons? Or no, do you think he's been um Oh no, he's been doing it, but yeah. has he had only had the recognition in the last couple of seasons? Um possibly to a wider audience. I think probably more to do uh, look, if you look at the last few seasons, he's had Pep Guardiola. Um who, who is the best coach 
He's the best coach in the world. We're lucky enough to have him in our league. Um, like we're talking about a transition and the transformation of different styles now and what's happening now in the UK and the Premier League. But we see it all around Europe as well. Um, we have a lot more Spanish coaches, a lot more managers who have worked in La Liga. But, you know, listen, it goes around in cycles, but mm -hmm. I, I believe we've watched probably the best generation of footballers that, you know, we, this Spanish team, don't forget, in 2008, World Cup. Everything, so rule everything, yeah. How could you not want to try and learn and play similar to what these guys are trying to do? They've, no one's dominated the game like these. No one's dominated the game like we've seen with Barcelona and Real Madrid and the way they play. So it's... I, think, I, I believe it's common sense, really, that we've had to change. We have to adapt. If we want to compete with these, because they're the ones who are winning World Cups, they're the ones who are winning European Championships, they're winning Champions Leagues like we're seeing now. They've been doing it for a, you know, for a number of years. I know we might talk through the last five years, but it's been... Ten three years, or four, yeah. yeah. it's been a good period before that as well. These players, you know, you walk, you know, your Ramoses, your Piquets, you know, decorated footballers that... I don't believe anyone would get to them. You know, the amount of trophies they've been, you know, into winning our generation, while well, we've been able to see it. And I believe a lot of coaches, and I think a lot of fans have got cleverer as well. They, they understand the game a lot more now. They want to see it. Mm. And when I'll never sit here and say, that's the right way to play, or this is the wrong way to play. And there is no right or wrong in football, but I know what I want to see. And I'm actually, if I'm, on, if I'm watching, say, you know, your Super Sunday or Saturday games, now, the coverage is not by all, but certainly with Sky, and you know the, the in-depth analysis we have to go to, you have to, you, you, I wouldn't say you educate, the, 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 the supporters now sat at home are more knowledgeable about the game now than they've ever Massively. Yeah, the information Massively. They, they receive. They see what's yeah. going on. They understand what's going on. So the information, you can't kid them. It's impossible to. But now they're going back as well, watching their clubs. They want to see it. They have a good understanding of the game now. They, they're understanding what's going on. They've watched your Barcelonas, your Spains, and they, this is brilliant. We want to see this. Yeah. We want to be involved in this. So I believe the transition now has come from like owners and chief execs, director of footballs are coming into our game, which I believe is, a good, is good. But listen, we're still stubborn. We don't like change very, very quickly, but we come to terms with it sooner or later. And I believe director of football was starting to get our head around a little bit, even though certain managers out there won't want it. There's a good reason behind that. A lot of them are <laughs> a certain age as well and they're looking to retire. But at the same time, younger managers coming through, younger coaches coming through the game, we understand, I want to work with director of football. Mm. I'd want to, you know, I'd, I'd need that. Take Is the that pressure off me. Uh, yeah. exactly. You Is go and do that, let me concentrate on the team. Yeah. Let me concentrate on whatever goes on. Not a problem, I'm, I'm hired to do this. Exactly, I need this, just provide me with this, or at least the closest to this, and yeah. you let that to another person, and it's not, because at the end, as a manager, what you want is focus on that, focus on my team, and try to make the best of my players. Exactly that. When, that, when, when, when it comes to bring players and deal with that, another person, I think is very important, and Spain has been drilling it now. For example, City, I think he's got his own well, and he's, he's been working. But we used to say, like, in, even when you played, there was, if someone had a shot from 30, 40 yards out, there'd be a round of applause, even though it went over. over. Everyone would be cheated, well done, he had a go, at least he had a go, that type of... Hmm. Abroad, you get booed. Mm -hmm. You just wasted good possession. And I think our fans, if you watch them, they start to come round to that. Well, why have you just wasted that? Why have you just done that? Craig, I used to laugh at that because I remember one of my first games at Anfield that I, uh, I did a back hill and, mm -hmm. I, I, and I thought, you know, that, there you go. It's a back hill. It's nice, and yeah. no one said anything. And after that, I saw like a clearance from three yards. Of, boom! All clear away. And the people just start shouting. Whoa. I said, what, "What just happened here?" So they don't like back hill. They don't, don't like works. Don't worry. We'll teach you. <laughs> so I think yeah, it's about uh, adapting to what is coming. And um, in, in Spain, it happened the same. I mean, the Barcelona style of keeping the ball. Yeah, yeah, Guardiola, that's keeping it, yeah. the ball. They have to adapt but because now there's not enough yeah. with that. And, but then I actually go back to your point, Jeff, and I do think that's why now players like David Silva are getting the plaudits that they do deserve because fans are understanding it now. And I suppose for him in a team where he's seen those passes, but he's actually got players on the end of the things, as on the end of those through balls and those nice runs and everything. So I do think now he is getting the plaudits he deserves.